So in this lesson, I would like to give you a quick introduction into Procreate, show you my favorite brushes and give you a demonstration of these brushes. Next to my sketchbook, my favorite drawing tool is Procreate because of its wonderful brushes. They have this traditional feel to them and they come closest to the feeling of working traditionally. So let me show you how I start in Procreate. You open your Procreate, you can go to the plus to create a new file. I usually use 3000 to 4000 pixels, but that really depends on what you're working for. If it's print or digital, if you're just working for a screen, screen size is just fine. So if you've just started in Procreate and if you haven't done it yet, there's also always one thing I need to do. It's to adjust the pressure control, which is found under the prefs. And there you can go to pressure and smoothing. And here you can see there's just a line. And my most comfortable pressure is when I pull it up. This is personal. Try to test what works best for you. This is because I don't want to press as hard on the iPad and that it registers more of my pressure. And it's good because your hand doesn't hurt from sketching too hard as well. My very favorite brush is the charcoal pencil, the general. And I keep trying new ones and I love trying new brushes. But this is the one I always return to, so let's show you. So here, this is the brush. You can see it has a lovely texture to it. And what I also always do is I reduce the opacity a little bit. And then I feel like it, I get a better result with the brush. So if you do something wrong, you can just undo a stroke with two fingers or redo them when you tap the screen with three fingers. Now let me show you the other brushes which I use when I sketch something or when I color in Procreate. So this is my sketch. I'm sort of fine with that. And then the next step, which I always do, is under this layer, I will create a new layer and do a block in. This is so that I can later draw stuff behind my drawing. But let me show you first. Chalk is my preferred brush for this. And this is a brush which comes with Procreate. So that is very cool. And you don't have to buy fancy brushes, really. This one is already very fancy from the start. So what I always do is my block in is usually a pinkish tone. This will be less uh, vivid later. Just block in, that, block that in roughly and you can clean it up later. So this brush has really nice texture to it. You can see at the edges and this is what I'm going for for this because I always want to keep a traditional look to it and these textures are perfect. It's not completely traditional, let's face it. It is digital, but I really enjoy the feeling. Here we could adjust this as much as we wanted and adjusting a sketch is always best with the eraser. And when you press the eraser for a long time, then it will switch exactly to the same brush which you were drawing with. So here you go. See, now I raise with the same pencil and this again gives me nice edges. That's basically always how I work. So here we've got the block in. And now as a next step, I create a layer on top and switch to a wash brush. So here for the skin tone, I use the gouache brush, but you can also use the watercolor brush. It doesn't really matter. Both of them are nice. The gouache brush is a little bit more opaque than the watercolor brush. So it will be more of a skin tone than if it would be brighter if you use the watercolor brush. Let me show you how they work. So I'm picking a skin tone now. So something in this range. And first of all, I will show you here. This is the tone which it will be. And now I'll go over the face. See, so this is slightly different. It's a little bit transparent. 
and I'm going over the face, just sort of coloring everything in. And now, one of my favorite tricks, I select the layer and go to Clipping Mask. And that means the color will only be applied to the layer underneath. So here you go, Clipping Mask, and voila, you can't draw over the lines. So that's really important. Just knowing about masks is one of the most important things when you're work working digitally. There's also other masks like layer masks and I'll come to those. I'll show you some later. But for now, this is just one of the main ways I work. And for the next color, like the hair, I would create a new layer on top of that and again go to clipping mask and all will be created on top of each other. I was working with the gouache brush, so that has a very slight texture to it underneath. The pink very slightly showing through. The watercolor brush itself is a little more transparent. I don't like that pink underneath. What I should do now is color in the complete head with this color. I try to go strand by strand when working with the watercolor brush. I can reduce the size a little bit, depending on how big the brush strokes are supposed to be. And the watercolor brushes get darker the more you layer them on top of each other. So I try to do some things in very little strokes. So they have these nice watercolor edges, which real watercolors have too. And if you want to have them, you can just stop coloring. But if you don't, just like me, try to do as much as possible in one stroke. Here you see it's going on top of each other, but I think that's nice in that case because that's where the edges in which it will be a bit darker. But to avoid the edges, just try to non-stop hold the pen in one stroke. And that gives you very interesting strokes in my opinion. So that's how I always draw hair. Just sort of leave the highlight free and draw the dark bits. The, the eyes have to be white, so that's also on a new layer. And now we can add some blush. I use a new layer for the blush. And here we go. Oh, that's, that's quite a lot of red. That's too much, isn't it? For one, what I really like to do with blush is I select this little N here and go to multiply. These are the layer effects. And that means that this layer will mix with the color underneath even better than before. For blush, I always go to a rather light, 32%, fine. And where I don't like the edges, I can just go to smudge. I will also go to the same brush which I'm currently working with. And you see the edges which I don't like, I can simply smudge. So this is one of the layer effects I do. I use multiply always for my shadows as well. So I create a new layer and set it to multiply. And then when I want to have some shadows, just like having the neck a bit darker. And here you can see, I selected the color underneath and painted with that. And that already gave me a very nice result. If the result isn't perfect, because the multiply usually works best in mid-tones, then you should sort of adjust the value a little bit, make it a bit lighter or a bit darker, depending on what looks good. It's always most important to do what looks best. Just sort of darken everything here as well and maybe inside the ear. Okay, I'm going to use a pinker color in the ear and maybe in the eyes as well, go a bit darker and the eyes, yeah, I would go through something like this just to have it a little bit varied. I will also blend it a little bit. I would like to now show you how the clipping mask, my head, is useful to draw something behind it. So when I put a layer underneath it, I can draw with this next watercolor grainy brush, one I use for bigger strokes. I'm painting behind the character without these two mixing. So this is why the clipping mask is so important. I can paint behind it and everything which I want to clip to the character is on top and everything behind it will stay behind it. And with that, I would say you've got the basics of how I work in Procreate. There's obviously a little bit more stuff coming to it, but that's just like the basics of how it's good to work in Procreate. 
So next, I would like to show you how you can easily color in your outlines, because here we still got the pink outlines, which are fine, but they're not where I want to be yet. So they're still set to normal. And with outlines, I often also mix them, but that's not necessary, but I like to have them on multiply. The colors mix nicer that way. So when you swipe with two fingers, you will get a alpha lock. That you can see that the, by looking at these pixels here, you get the little squares, and that means the layer has alpha lock. Now I'm painting the outlines blue, but only the outlines. So that's good. So I don't want blue outlines, but I wanted to show you how I can just this way paint only on the outlines. I could do the same with the clipping mask. Sometimes it's more handy to just sort of alpha lock it if you want to do it exactly just in that minute. I will pick here this hair color and paint the hair in a little bit more natural tone. Now I'm just drawing on this line. This is because I only have one layer. I could also clip more layers of colors on top of the layer mask, but that would give you not the best layer hygiene. You would have end up with loads of layers. I like to use layers and then merge them together. I will show you how to do that as well. So this is how you can color in your outlines. And I'm only going to out color in the outlines of the hair here because I like the skin tone. Well, maybe just here it's a bit too dark. If you're happy, you can just sort of merge all of these together. And I don't merge them with the base layer, with this lock-in layer, because I can always edit that still and the colors will stay intact. So let me show you how that is. Let's say you want to change this hairdo a little bit. So now if you select only these two and not the watercolor layer, you can just transform the lines and the watercolor layer stays intact. So that means you don't have any weird edges or you break your texture of your watercolor. So that can be really handy. So you can either transform the watercolor as well. So this is one of the reasons why I don't merge all my color layers with my block in layer because I can always edit it. I can erase parts of it or add to it and the colors will stay intact on top. And with this, I gave you the tools you need to work in Procreate. There's obviously tons of more options in here, but these are like the basics, which I find are important to know when you're creating a digital illustration. And with this, you will have all the tools you need to, cre to create your own final project. So in the next lesson, I would like to talk about composition, which is the foundation of drawing. So stay tuned.